It's so nice to have you guys here. Uh, a little bit later, we're going to have our mayor, Mike Mendenhall, who's been a Rotarian for a few years, and I don't know how long, and he's going to talk about what Rotary means to him and the community. It's going to be great. Okay, I, we as a club are going to spotlight Bill Summers because he's awesome. And first of all, I've got, I had three questions for him. Who are you? What do you do? And why are you in Rotary? So. Okay, well, uh, Bill Summers. <laughs> I've been, uh, I was raised in Orem and graduated from high school there, went to BYU, uh, didn't graduate. Baby started coming after you get married, you know, and never got back, so I'm still a second semester senior and <laughs> gonna probably die that way. So anyway, uh, my first job was with Happy Service uh, Market, started in Springville, and their second store was here in Spanish Fork. And so about, uh, go, 1972 or something, they bought the store that's across from Barry's Drive-In. So uh, I don't know if any of you guys remember that, but there was a little store there. It was Taylor's Market uh, before Happy Service bought that. And uh, I, uh, about the same time I got married and moved back to Oklahoma and worked for Safeway as a produce manager back there. And then came back to Utah, went back to work for Happy Service until about 1976. He got a few uh, difficulties with finances and let a bunch of uh, managers go and that was a blessing for me. I went to work for Macy's back in 1976 up in the Orem store and I worked in that store until 1982. In 82 we came down to Salem right there on the corner next to uh, Alta Bank and had Macy's there for uh, six years. They wouldn't give us a beer license. <laughs> And it shut down? Called, no, they, another store came in after us, but they, Mr. Macy came down and talked to him about uh, getting a beer license. They called him a drug pusher. <laughs> so that was uh, our end of time in Salem. And we is bought... Where Emerald Eve is now, Bill? Where what? Emerald Eve. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So... Uh, we bought the farmer's mat, farmer Jacks had bought Safeways out and we came and uh, took over that location which is right up by where our flag is there on the corner and we were there until 2003 and then we built this store here so uh, the reason I am in Rotary when Walt Macy <clears throat> hired me, he said, we always give back to the community. Whatever we're doing, we're nothing if we don't give it back to the community. So uh, I've always taken that to heart. And the, the, I try to always do whatever I can to help in the community. And uh, I think that's what has made Macy successful is giving back to the community. And being a part of Rotary is a way that you can give back to the community. And it's it's a lot of fun besides. So, and if you want to be mayor, the last two mayors have both been Rotarians. So. <laughs> so. Okay. And Thank that you, is Bill. Thank you. Okay, Mayor, you're up. Well, I don't know how to follow Bill Summers, but he's exactly right. Uh, if I go back to like uh, my central bank days where my brother Tyler works uh, now, uh, I remember uh, Glenn Roach, our manager there of that office, coming into uh, to the office one day and, and saying, uh, Mike, if, you know, do you want to be successful, a successful banker? Do you want to be you know, happy in the community and serve the community? I said, sure I do. And he says, well, I go to Rotary and I do that, so I have Rotary covered. 
and um, Mike uh, uh, Hess. Mike Hess goes to Kiwanis, and so the Chamber of Commerce has left. If you'd like to go to the Chamber, so I went to the Chamber, uh, and uh, I don't know, missed a couple meetings. And the, if you miss a couple meetings at the Chamber, they made you president back then. <laughs> And, uh, and so that happened. And, and then after that, the businesses were like, hey, we need somebody uh, in, uh, in city government to speak for businesses. We feel like we want to be more involved in the city. And so why don't you run for that? And uh, uh, so I ran for uh, a, a city council seat and, uh, and served two terms there. And, and now I'm one year in uh, as, as mayor of Spanish Fork, and it hasn't burned down yet, so I'm calling it a success. Uh, but, uh, but no, I'm, I'm humbled, I'm honored to, to serve uh, in city government, uh, eight years of city council. Um, it was sure a fun time, uh, depending on the day that you catch Amber, she'll tell you maybe a little different story, but you know, it's, uh, it's been a great, a great ride, and it's been a fun time as, as mayor this last year. Um, I just got back a couple of weeks ago I think I'll start every, every time I speak uh, uh, off with this now um, because uh, a couple of weeks ago going to Washington, D.C., uh, and I've been back there numerous times to, to speak for local government uh, to uh, our representatives and senators back there. Uh, this time was for our power organization. Uh, but the day before the conference started, I'd never been to Gettysburg, and, and the group that we were out there with said, hey, let's go to Gettysburg. And uh, what a touching, you know, moving place, really kind of a, a more of a spiritual experience, I think, that, that you could say about anything back there. But our tour guide was really good. He must have known we were politicians. It was a group of us mayors that were there. And, uh, and he ended the tour uh, right where um, Lincoln uh, gave the Gettysburg Address, right? And, uh, and kind of a place, I thought there would be some big fanfare about where he gave the Gettysburg Address, but it's really not much. I mean, it's a cemetery for, for Civil War uh, veterans there from Union soldiers. And, th and then the town's cemetery of Gettysburg is kind of shared with it right there. And they said, hey, this is, you know, you're kind of standing where, where Lincoln probably stood and gave the Gettysburg Address. And then he reminded us politicians and he said, you know, he wasn't the main speaker that day. And does anybody know how long the Gettysburg Address was? The most famous American political speech, probably you know, maybe in the world, but especially in American history? And we are kind of looking at each other, I don't know. Three minutes. Three minutes. So Amber has not let me forget that yet. And she's like, hey, if you start talking politics more than three minutes, the greatest speech was not longer than three minutes. So I brought her here, to, yes. Two hours, two hours, yeah. The congressman that came out with Lincoln uh, and, and was there to speak spoke for two hours before Lincoln got up and, and gave the Gettysburg Address. And so I'm sure in, in November, people were a little bit like, oh my gosh, what are we doing here, you know? Uh, but uh, but what, a, what, a, what a neat experience to mark that moment. Mark uh, really one of, I, more, than, more than myself, um, I love that, uh, our 16-year-old son Nash uh, is is you know into some U.S. history classes and things and and when he talks about U.S. history, he talks a lot about Lincoln and I'm like, yeah, you're getting the, you're getting the right idea of, of what this is all about. So uh, anyway, so that's it. I'm done. Like three minutes is up. Uh, uh, Amber and I just got back from. Um, uh, just just an hour ago uh, from a conference in um, down in St. George. Uh, there was a parks and, and recreation conference. Um, many of you know that if you've been involved in, in, in anything, in your, whether it's in your businesses or, or in, in some level of uh, volunteerism or government, um, there's always conferences to kind of share best practices and, and hone your skills. And, and this parks and rec conference is a good one uh, every year to, to, to get to. Um, I can't, again, I can't repeat it enough uh, that, that when we go to these things and, and you get to wear Spanish fork on your chest, I'm not wearing it today, but I was yesterday, um, people know a thing or two in the state of Utah uh, about Spanish fork. Um, they, they definitely know our Parks and Recreation Department uh, is second to none. Um, uh, the home of pride and progress, I think our Parks and Rec Department takes that as, to heart as much as uh, anyone. Um, in that, yes, we're proud of, we're proud of what we have uh, here in Spanish Fork. 
uh, recreation opportunities, open space, place for families and people to get together. But if you're not advancing that ball forward, it's probably going backward. And so the home of pride and progress, especially in the Parks and Recreation Department, we are, we're moving forward with some exciting, exciting things, exciting components of it. And, and I'll stop speaking here in a minute and you can all ask me questions about it. But, uh, but you know, the, we've made the announcements of, which is actually, I didn't know, it, about a year ago now, almost to the day, is when um, we shot a little video and announced the, the, the recreation center. Uh, aquatic center, senior center uh, being built in Spanish Fork. And so finally a year later, we have some better details, some better drawings of that for everybody to look at. And, and in the coming uh, few days and, and weeks, you'll see that as the public and get to weigh in uh, and, and talk about maybe what, uh, what your recommendations would be for that center. But located, in, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, located South Main Street, at our sports park area is where that facility uh, will be built. And every school that I've spoken in uh, so far uh, this last year, you, you know, when, when I say, okay, it's time for questions, you know, a hundred hands go up and Lana knows this. And w the, the first one that asks about it is, where's the pool gonna be? Where's the recreation center gonna be? And so, so yes, uh, the, the, the youth of, of our city are excited uh, about it as well. So I'm excited to, to show you some of those I didn't bring it with me today, um, but uh, you'll, you'll see that in the next week or so. You'll see some pretty good drawings of, of that. Um, that's not all we have going on uh, in Spanish Fork. We've got a lot of things going on. Uh, Brad and America First Credit Union cut a new ribbon on a new place. Uh, that was a very cool thing to have us out to, but, uh, but I, I would say that's a, a pretty good uh, barometer, if you will, indicator of what's happening in Spanish Fork. The economic progress uh, here is, uh, is second to none, uh, I, would, I would argue, in, inside at least Utah County. Um, Amber and I were down, like I said, in St. George, and, and with, you can tell who's, who lives up north because the sun came out for like 10 seconds and it got to like a balmy 55 <laughs> degrees, and our two kids were like, we gotta go to the pool, right? It's like, oh my gosh. So we're down there with one other, one other mom and her kids that are down there at the pool. And, and we both, you know, she says to Amber, well, you guys must be from up north too, right? Because we're crazy. And, uh, and yeah, we got to talking. And the first thing she mentioned, right, from, was she PG or Orem? Where'd she live? Somewhere up north, PG. And, um, and, and yeah, she remarked, hey, you got it, kind of got it going on down in Spanish Fork, right? A lot of things, we're not just passing passing through to go to St. George or Moab anymore, we're stopping in Spanish Fork. And, uh, and we hope that's the case. Um, the numbers indicate that's, that's the case. Um, more and more, every, every report that we get from, we call it kind of the economic hub of, Span of, of South Utah County, uh, is that there's a lot of visitors in, in, in Spanish Fork. Um, a few hours, you know, try to drive a thousand north out here, right, Bill, and, and, and go east and west. And, and, and the odds are, if you get really mad at somebody and honk and, and maybe give them, you know, a salute that's not very kind, the odds are that might not be your neighbor anymore. That might be somebody uh, from, you know, from, yeah, Delta. It could be, they could be from Delta, Santa Quin, Nephi, Price, uh, Springville, Provo, uh, anywhere, you know, a lot of, a lot of activity uh, happening uh, around this area, which, it, and I'll tell you this, it may, it may be a little political uh, way of saying it, um, but it really has been a focus of mine for the, almost the past decade of being in public services. The trade-off of those economic dollars coming to Spanish Fork, those sales tax dollars, rather than property tax dollars. What that turns into for you and I is a high level of service from your local government and, and, and hopefully turning into a high quality of life for a low, a low cost to, to the residents. Um, so, uh, you know, every tax dollar that you can, you can garner from, from a sales tax or a use tax, again, is a tax that's, that's not uh, maybe on our property, on our property side. Um, and so, so that's been a real, uh, a, a real big focus. 
not, not, not only the time I've served, but, but uh, previous mayors and councils before me. Um, but, but we've tried to keep that focus and do it in a way that, that is manageable. Obviously, there's some traffic um, trade-offs that come with that. Um, I will tell you, we're, we're working hard on those. Um, your, your, your money is being spent on those. The legislative session that just got, that just completed, um, that's what we're at, up there advocating for all the time. Because some of these are city roads, a lot of them we share with the state, right? And so, so funding comes uh, to those in different ways. Um, but, but that is a, a temporary trade-off. We do have some plans uh, in, in, in the next year and, and year and a half that you will see some significant changes to, to sections of road in Spanish Fork. And that, that is in conjunction with some larger projects. Uh, gentleman that lived in Woodland Hills, uh, you'll be able to come you know, down Elk Ridge Drive now and actually hit the freeway without having to go through a lot of city streets uh, that'll, that'll get you out to the freeway if you ever need to go north. You shouldn't, you should only have to come to Spanish Fork and, <laughs> and Macy's, but if you need to get to a, you know, international airport or something, all right, we'll, we'll let you get on I-15. But, uh, but no, there's um, uh, transit, uh, a lot of things we're, we're uh, in constant discussions with of making sure uh, our residents can not only, you know, not only benefit from being able to stay in your community and, and, and walk and shop in your community, um, go to school in your community, uh, but also in the very near future, you know, get, you know, get on transit and, and get to where you need to go if you need to go up to an airport or things like that. So we're constantly fighting for those things uh, in, in, in our area of, of town here as well. Um, what else, Amber? Yeah, what do we need to cover? Yeah, you betcha. Yeah. What does that mean? I mean, is there value and what kind, what kind of value is that? Yeah, so that's a great question, Lana. And when, when I pull into any city now, it's kind of interesting how, how life has a way of doing that. But you see on the south end of Spanish Fork by the fairgrounds, when you come in, you see a rotary wheel. You see the rotary sign. You see a Kiwanis sign, right? And you say, hey, here's, here's you know, here's part of what you're getting when you come into this community. I notice that everywhere I go now, right? I notice that every little community we drove through. Yeah, I was in Europe and noticed that. And you notice that, right? Yeah. Right? We've got to stop. <laughs> so that, that connection, I, I can tell you, for me, it has felt so much more of a connection broadly across. Now, I haven't been to Europe to see it yet. I, 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 I will. Um, but, but I have seen that east, west, north, and south as, as, as we've traveled, uh, and, it, and it just feels like, okay, this is a, there's some good people in this good community doing good things, right? And that's no, that's, that's, uh, that is certainly the case in Spanish Fork. The Rotary Club, um, there's pavilions named after the Rotary. Well, I never grew, knew growing up, I don't know, you know, or the Rotary Pavilion, I can't, why? Well, because the Rotary Club went there and volunteered and built the dang thing, right? They raised money to do a bunch of stuff in your community. And sometimes, I guess, the government, local government felt like, ah, oh, let's throw them a bone and let them, you know, name it or whatever. But, <laughs> but they, do that, they do that so much more than, than just what's named uh, after a specific club. Um, I can't tell you enough. Uh, a, a, few, a few years ago, that, that initiative where we started talking about you know, children in Spanish Fork and, and the recreation programs. I mean, look for families, uh, families that are just getting by, uh, sometimes a very tough thing to, to, to ask them, hey, it costs $40, it costs $50 to play Little League Baseball or, or soccer or, or, or whatever the sport may, might be. And uh, again, it just, just shows the caring nature of the Rotary Club that jumping in two feet first, hey, how can we help? We can help raise money and get with the principals and talk about who might need that assistance, right? And that's still going on today. Um, there's, that's something we're really proud about in, in Spanish Fork because of the Rotary Club, generous donors. Uh, there, there's not a kid that if they don't have the ability to pay that we're telling them they couldn't play, right? And if there's anything uh, that 
that shows you more of the need for not just that, you know, not just that physical activity and physical interaction, the social interaction, uh, have a pandemic and then don't have that interaction. And, and I'm sure Lana Hiskey can tell us about uh, a few years of, you know, what that does for students and education as a whole. But um, that, uh, that is, 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 I think, vitally important that, that this, the city has such good partners like the Rotary Club to serve in capacities that maybe sometimes, you know, government just isn't designed or wired to think of, um, right? I'm a big believer in um, government certainly shouldn't be the answer in all of the things in our lives. Um, I can tell you that as, as soon as, as soon as, and local government, I would say definitely is, is different than state government. It's different than the federal government. So, so, so let's not lump it into all one big curse word for sure. Um, but I could show you some things that I think if we start touching it as local government, you know, some people are, some of the emails I get uh, and messages I get more than anything are, are, hey, I'm really concerned about, about what this person is doing with their ground, right? What they're doing with their private property. And maybe that private property is a five acre field. Maybe it's a 30 acre field. Maybe it's a quarter acre lot of of, that their home sits on. And I'm really concerned, government, about what they're doing on their private property. I always have to remind myself, if you're asking government to get so much involved in someone's private property and their private business, you're kind of asking them to get into your business, into your property, right? And, and so sometimes, you know, uh, the idea of, 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 yes, keeping regulations and, and everything at kind of a minimum um, is, uh, is a good idea of local government. I think all levels of government, but yeah, sorry, you asked a political, you asked a question to a politician. I, I went off and along the, the, the summary of it is that the Rotary Club vitally important to Spanish Fork for, for service, uh, and, and apparently electing mayors, right, Bill? <laughs> Yeah, so I had it on my phone because I had to check it uh, really quick because it changes daily. We are at 209% of average. I can send, I'll, I can send you the, the link to the um, snow equi equivalence, excuse me, water equivalent, equivalency, yep, uh, in, in snow totals, in inches. And we are in the Colorado Basin Provo uh, group. And today we are 209% of average. That you can't see it. Maybe he'll get it on the on the on the TV. But the the purple and green are 1983 and 1984. Which, if you lived around here long enough, those were pretty scary years of high water. We are well above any record that we have in water years. Um, and so, why I bring that up when when Lana brings up the river trail, the river trail serves a dual purpose. Number one. Uh, it is uh, a berm for flood situation. So uh, flood mitigation along the Spanish Fork River is a huge, um, a huge part of, of the river trail, but it's a, it's, it's a concern. We certainly haven't had to worry about it the last almost eight, nine years here in Spanish Fork, but, but we, we do this year. And so the river trail is a berm uh, for the floodway. Uh, a great trade off of that is it is a beautiful uh, nine mile long stretch that uh, can get our residents up and down, I think some of the prettiest parts of, of Spanish Fork. Um, really that's a, a great partnership between uh, Spanish Fork, between property owners, between farmers and ranchers, some farmers that still actively farm along the river trail. And sometimes I, I do talk to them often and I'm like, I know it's frustrating we, we, when we want to take a walk, one farmer has some, some horses that he lets out in his, in his pasture area. And he's like, I need to remind some of the, the, the runners and the joggers that I, I, I take really good care of my horses. I know what they eat. And so apples and oranges and all the fruits that we feed them, maybe not the, <laughs> so, so if you're going along the river trail, make sure Yes, you're looking at those beautiful farms and you're watching, but it is private property, so maybe don't hop in the, Tyler, I've seen you running through the corn before when it gets high. 
let's, let's stay out of it. It's a fun exercise. It's a fun exercise. But the river trail uh, continuing to expand, you're actually going to see it start connecting to the Mapleton Trail. Um, so you'll be able to stay on Spanish Forks Trail. It goes all the way up Dripping Rock, gets you up to our reservoir up by the gun club, and then gets you all the way down here to the sports park where the, where the recreation center is going to be built. And so basically you could get a bunch of kids without having to go on a road. Not just kids, adults are welcome too. But, uh, but you can get uh, to our recreation center and that sports park right now and not have to go on a lot of public streets here on the trail a whole lot. So it's really cool. Some people that live in different places, different areas that come here just to go on the river trail. I yeah, mean, yeah, we got a, mm -hmm. a we've, that trailhead on Tree Road is used a lot by people that don't live here. So, yeah. so is the sports park uh, trailhead. A lot of people that don't live here come park there and get up and down the trail. The one caution I will give you, and this is to more kids than us, um, but it is the next few weeks to a month is going to be very high water in the Spanish Fork River. Tyler and I come from, our, our dad was the river commissioner there and our grandpa was the commissioner before that. So we've kind of grown up in that river. You are gonna see that river, maybe like you've never seen it in your lifetime this year. So it will be, it will be high, it will be fast and uh, just, be careful around it. Your kid gets in there, it's going to be tough to get out by themselves. And so we just want to make sure this is a year where, yeah, watch, watch it really good. Mike, you know, with all the work being done with the Salem Canal and putting a trail over top of the Salem Canal where it used to be, um, where that is going to connect into the Spanish Fork and Mapleton Trail? Uh, I yeah, yeah, it'll be up by there. I think you'll see that trail. Our, you know, the, the, we used to call it Tree Road. What is the actual name of that? I, Poplar Lane. Yeah, Poplar Lane. Uh, I think what you, I think the trail that I've or the plan that I've originally seen gets up that road there and gets you on top, and now starts to connect you into the Salem trails. Yeah, the ULS pipeline that's being that's being built there will have some trail sections over it, some road sections as well. Um, but that's a big undertaking as well. The ULS pipeline is, you know, as much for South Utah County as it is for, um, for out west, out, out Genola and, and that way. Um, if you don't know it, the, it, a lot of people do ask us about every new subdivision that pops up. It was a farm filled before, and then maybe, you know, a year later, it's, you know, I don't know, 50 or 100 homes or something. And people inevitably ask, where are we getting the water? How are you getting the water? Well, two things. Number one, that field has water rights, right? It's been farmed and it's been irrigated with real water rights for, I don't know, generations, right? So it's had, it's had water delivered to it as, as well already. Uh, so those people, whether there's homes growing on it or corn growing on it, have water rights, okay? They, ha they have rights to that water. The good thing about the ULS pipeline that now delivers water at pressure uh, coming from, from Strawberry Reservoir uh, simply means that the, the, the water situation in South Utah County did get a lot more reliable. It got, it got a, lot, a lot better. Um, developed, developed springs, millions and millions of dollars spent over the last five, 10 years as well to, to make sure our springs are developed up Spanish Fork Canyon, which is where Spanish Fork residents get their drinking water. Lana drives by those, she knows where those are at. Um, Amber's already done. This is old hat to her. We got kids. Yeah, we got kids. Sorry, I've lost the room. Um, yeah, so I, I just again assuring you there's a lot of intricacies that go into that, a lot more details. But what I can assure you is when we develop, not we, because we don't develop, but when developers develop their property inside Spanish Fork, um, it is wet water. I know that sounds awkward. Isn't all water wet? Yeah. Nah, not all the time. If, uh, it used to be that you could transfer water rights from another basin where it, that basin doesn't even flow into our area. So how are we ever going to get that water here? There's not a delivery system to get here. You could turn, into that, turn in that water to a city and say, I want to turn that water in. And, and so I want the water rights to be able to, to develop here. 
That doesn't happen in Spanish Fork. That hasn't happened for, for decades in Spanish Fork. The water that if you want to develop, it has to be wet water. It has to be water that is on that ground already and can be delivered to, to be there. Um, and so, yes, even though we're having a wet year, we're, st we're still very drought conscious in Spanish Fork. Okay. We do, they have to turn those in, that's correct. Yeah, they have to turn those in and, uh, and yes, we could go into a lot more than five minutes of pressurized irrigation, uh, secondary water system. Spanish Fork did that 23 years ago where the state has now mandated that across cities and towns across the state. We were ahead of that game. So we have conserved a lot of water in Spanish Fork over two decades because number one, it's, it's not drinking water that you're watering your lawns with. And number two, it's metered. So every, every home in Spanish Fork and business if you want to walk, turn on the secondary water, there's a meter running and measuring the gallons that you will pay for. And pretty soon, what you'd see the last three really dry years in Spanish Fork, when you would say, hey, Spanish Fork's been growing the last three years, our, and it's been really dry, so our water consumption has had to grow, right? It's just, it's just grown because those new homes, those new subdivisions, things, just the opposite. The last three years, Spanish Fork's water usage has went down. Now I credit that to two things. Number one, residents being informed, hey, conserve water, we're in a drought. And you're gonna hear that again this year, even though we're 210% of normal, you're gonna hear that again this year. Uh, it takes a lot more years like this to probably bounce us out of a drought, right? Um, but number two, they're informed. Number two, they pay for it. You want to water your lawn in Spanish Fork? There's no, there's no Tuesday and Thursday alternate, you know, alternating days. It's you're going to pay for it. And so you do that one month and you realize, eh, my grass can be a little bit brown. <laughs> brown. I'm all right with that. All right, what else? Sorry, questions. Any other big questions? Yes? Just, just a quick, quick comment and question. The, you know, over the, the 10 years that I worked for Spanish Fork City, um, I was just always so impressed in, a, in a, a world now where politicians seem to butt heads, but our city council, it seems like, has always been on the same page and worked as a team. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious your comments if, if you have seen that as well, but uh, I think that's pretty unique, and I, I'd like to thank you for your service and, and commend the city council for the way they've been able to work well, thanks. That's too kind of you to say, but uh, when can we get you back? You need to co <laughs> come out of retirement. Uh, no, you're right. Um, we're unique in that. And sometimes we have to explain to residents and, and probably be better at detailing it that because we all might get on the same page about a decision, it certainly doesn't mean that we all agree all the time or that when we're mindless robots about what it is. There is, there is debate, um, respectful debate and discussion between, between the council. Um, uh, Chris, Chris alluded to it as the mayor uh, and the council, none of us, it, that's not our full-time job, right? So we have to live uh, just like whatever other people would have to live with results of decisions we make. So, you know, I'm, I'm a financial advisor, so kind of every decision that runs through my head is like, well, how's this gonna affect the, you know, the financial lives of people, right? How's it gonna affect, you know, trying to be fiscally responsible, certainly is some, the background I come from. But Councilman Argyle, when we do a roundabout, you'll hear him, how do I take a 16-wheeler through the roundabout, right? <laughs> and he's got something to say about it. Yeah, you've heard it, you've heard about it, you know? And, and uh, Councilman Marshall from an engineering background, uh, Councilwoman Beck from a, a, a sales and marketing uh, background. Uh, Councilman Euler uh, is a bean counter. He, he, he's a counter for, for uh, New Skin, does that a lot. And, and uh, Councilman Carden uh, is an entrepreneur, a business owner in the, in the, in the plasma space. And so we, we do all come from those lens when we're making decisions. And um, I will say, that's, that's part, probably a part that, that, that the public sometimes misses. We do debate, um, but when, when a decision is made to move forward, this council is second to none in saying, let's move forward and let's go and let's do what's best for Spanish Fork, do what's best for the citizens of Spanish Fork. And do I say we get it right 100% of the time? No, 
but I always say we hit a, we sure hit a lot of singles and, uh, and those singles add up to runs. And so not everything needs to be a home run, uh, but, uh, but you need to consistently hit singles. And I think we do that a lot in Spanish fork. So thank you for that, Chris. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Rotarians. Thank you for potential Rotarians. And uh, thanks for your time. <laughs>